ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Somos Mas. My name, of course, is Seth Biddle. Thank you guys for joining us again here this evening. We do appreciate you turning, tuning in all week long as we have been bringing you special World Cup coverage here. Um, guys, Match Day 7 is in the books. Um, th- quite a few results today. No one has been eliminated except for Qatar so far. Uh, Argentina stave off elimination. There were some very interesting matches today, so hopefully you guys got the chance to check those out. Um, I don't know if Earl is going to be joining me here this evening. Jacob is out of town. Um so Earl may or may not pop on, but uh, I was actually traveling today, uh, came back from a short trip, and was actually watching the matches on a plane today, which is uh, really interesting. Um, you know, uh, the fact that I had continued signal throughout the entire thing and the ability to watch uh, basically uh, a match and a half while in the air was uh, was a lot of fun. was uh, was really interesting, and it was, I was glad to be able to keep continue to keep track of it at, throughout my day, and and then uh, after I landed, I had some time to you know, relax and then sit down and, and, and watch the last game while also having some uh, college football on, on as well. Uh, you know, my, my boys and I just spent today relaxing and hanging out. So it was, uh, it was good. I hope you all had a fantastic Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, we are getting back into the swing of things, you know, everyone's going to be back in school and work and all that kind of stuff on Monday. So, um, we do appreciate you taking the time to spend some time with us. Uh, you, some of you are listening over on the podcast. Some of you are watching online. And uh, no matter how you're taking in the content, we do appreciate you guys. So that being said, I mean, let's just jump right into it. We did have four more matches today. And uh, the first one up was Australia and Tunisia. We talked about this one a little bit yesterday. We weren't really expecting a whole lot out of this. You know, Australia jumped out to an early lead against France in their in their first match, and uh, Tunisia they were <clears throat> they went they had a nil nil draw in their first mar- in the first match of the of the World Cup. So, wasn't really expecting too much out of this. Um, Australia, I feel like, could potentially contend for that second spot coming out of Group D, but you know, I was fairly convinced that this match was going to you know end up as you know nil nil one one something along those lines and and uh you know australia really didn't show a whole lot going forward in terms of possession or you know chance creation and uh you know they they picked up a goal there in the first half from mitch duke uh, nicely uh, nice little well-worked goal so um and then tunisia i mean Tunisia actually looked pretty good, you know, um, 13 attempts on goal, only four of them were on target though. So accuracy, uh, their accuracy, uh, wasn't great, but they certainly put Australia in a bad spot a number of times trying to, uh, you know, find a goal there and keep their, uh, and give their hopes of continuing on a bit of a boost, um, Unfortunately, they came out on the losing side today. Again, 1-0 to Australia. Um, that leaves a a final uh, in this group next week. Um, we'll get to those here in just a second. So um, Tunisia, I mean, really, looking at where they're at, uh, they're going to need some help. You know, they're going to have to win their next match and get some help in order to, in order to be able to move on uh, to the knockouts. But, you know, there were some things that I liked about Tunisia today, and not really a whole lot, but, um, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, the better side came out today. Uh, I feel like in terms of uh, level of play and, um, you know, the quality of players at, at the two teams have so um so yeah australia one nil win and move we'll go and jump on into the other match like i have been doing and uh, stay within the group group d the second match today this was the 9 a.m match france and denmark um i mean this one i expected to be quite competitive you know denmark has a pretty good side um but of course you know france is number one team in the world for a reason um France obviously coming off of their 4-1 win the other day. Uh, They came into this with uh, a pretty good lineup. You know, Olivier Giroud's back is still in there, killing Mbappe. I mean, things looked, you know, they they looked pretty well set up for France coming into this. You know, you've got a side that's playing extremely well and uh, full of confidence. So, I mean, 
again, things, like I said, things, things looked well, uh, well on hand for, for France. And, and uh, they really came out uh, firing. Um, they looked good. They had some early opportunities. Couldn't quite get anything to convert though, but <clears throat> you could just see that level of confidence there and it continued to continue to grow throughout the match. And so, um, you know, Mbappe finally gets a, a goal in the 61st minute. A really nice goal for him. Uh, Denmark comes back a few minutes later and levels it. Uh, Andreas Christensen uh, pulls pulls that back, puts puts get, puts Denmark in a chance to where they can potentially you know walk out with a with a draw or even a win. And and uh, but it just wasn't meant to be. Uh, Mbappe again picked up a second goal on the night uh, in the 86th. And I mean, really, again, this is one that you know I. I felt France was easily the stronger of the two sides. France, you know, has got so much talent and nothing against Denmark, but you know, it, against a club like France, like you really got to be at the very best that you can be in order to have an opportunity to beat them. And, you know, I mean, that's saying a lot considering the fact that Denmark had beaten France twice this year in other competitions. And so, you know, it, there's a, I think I believe the saying is, you know, it's, uh, it's hard enough to beat a team twice in a year, but to beat them a third time is near impossible. Like in a situation like this, you know, with the, with two sides that are so familiar with each other, I mean, the stats were nearly identical in terms of possession. And so, you know, you could see what each of them wanted to do. And this was a highly entertaining match. One that I would, I would recommend going back and watching again. Um, you know, France had some great opportunities to to really put this one away. And, uh, you know, they let Denmark hang around. And, you know, Denmark showed why the, why they played so well against them early uh, throughout the throughout the year. So um, great match here. Group D, uh, their second set of matches is in the books. And so after two two matches, France, of course, leads the way with six. They are through to the next round. Um, and so it leaves Australia, Denmark, and Tunisia fighting for the second spot. Um, Australia gets through, uh, let's see, Australia's final is going to be against Denmark. So, um, a win or draw in Australia is through here. Um, Denmark would have to have a win. Tunisia gets in with a win and some help. So, um, I mean, Tunisia going up against France, uh, extremely tall task for them. Like, I just don't, I don't see that happening, but you know, stranger things have happened. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it really looks like it's gonna be France and Australia at this point. But I mean, you know, a Denmark win over Australia is get, could definitely change the outcome of things here. So, uh, keep an eye on that next week. So. Uh, the other two matches on the day, the 6 a.m. match was Poland and Saudi Arabia. This is one that I got to watch um, in, in most of its entirety. Um, it was uh, really uh, Saudi Arabia, you know, they're a side that I looked at and no one really expected them to do a lot in this tournament. And, you know, they shocked the... Um, They shocked Argentina the other day, uh, came out, played really, really well. They played well uh, early on here today. And it just, you know, it. You know, Poland is one of those teams that, like I said last night, you know, I felt like they, um, they underperformed in their opener. And so looking at this one, I felt this was a really good chance for them to get back uh, on the right track. And... Uh, you know, Zelensky gets the goal there in the 39th. And then it just, you know, it, as the, as the match went on, um, Poland just looked to be the better side in terms of quality of chances, not necessarily the, the outcome of them or, or in terms of, you know, uh, how they looked on the ball. Um, but, 
and I, and I say that in terms of, you know, maintaining possession, you know, keeping things going forward. And, you know, it, s- Poland really seemed to be in control of the flow of things, even though, you know, they, they gave up the amount of possession that they did. And so, you know, for, for Poland to pick up a win here, Lewandowski finally got his first goal in the world cup. I believe this is his, uh, he had a he's had a number of appearances uh, without scoring a goal, and so you could see you know the emotional breakdown that he had there. Earl, glad you could pop in. How you doing, man? Um, you know Lewandowski again, first goal. I mean he's been he's been one of the the biggest players in all of Europe over the past several years, and so you know he's doing really well in La Liga this year. He's always done well. Uh, at, had always done well at Bayern. And so, you know, to see him finally have that, that moment, and he's talked about, you know, the, the older he gets, the more emotional he gets. And so, you know, he, he broke down on the pitch after, after the, after his goal today. And so, you know, it, it's good to see him finally get that. Like, you know, it's, it, it was a really entertaining match. I really enjoyed this one. Um, again, go back and watch it. Fun to see. You can see what Poland wanted to do. Um, and I think they're on, track here with what they want to do and where they want to be uh, going into match day number three for them. So, and then of course the, the finale today, Argentina and Mexico, this is a match that both, but that both sides needed, Um, you know, Mexico, you know, Mexico has, we've talked about Mexico really, really struggled. Um, you know, coming in, they haven't looked like the team that they should. And Tata Martino, love him to death, love him for what he did at Atlanta United. But, you know, Mexico just hasn't looked the same. They really haven't. And, you know, they, they just, you know, they, they really struggled, you know, in, in their draw against Poland. They struggled today against Argentina. And, you know, that was borne out in the results. Um, you know, and Argentina, obviously, that they needed today to, to stay alive in the World Cup. Uh, you know, they came in after losing, uh, after the shock loss to Saudi Arabia in the first match day for them. And so, you know, yeah, they had the penalty from, from, from Messi in the first one. They had the, uh, you know, and they just they just didn't look like Argentina. They didn't look like one of the one of the favorites to win. And so, you know, this is one that they really, really needed. You know, you, you look at how they played and Tata Martino for whatever Tata completely changed away from the four, three, three that he typically runs to like a, a five, three, two, which is really strange. Um, it, I don't think it worked out well for them. I don't think Mexico is really geared for that. Um, and so, you know, Poland did a, did a fantastic job or I'm sorry, Argentina did a fantastic job today uh, of working through that and finding the open spaces and, and working the, the ball into, into dangerous areas. Um, you know, going back and looking at it, you know, Messi finally got his, a goal from open play. It wasn't necessarily a great shot. Like he put a good stroke on the ball, but it was, it was from distance. It was low. It, even live, it didn't seem to necessarily have a, a ton of pace on the ball. So I'm, I'm really, I was really kind of surprised that, that he scored on that attempt, but you know, I, I think it's weird to say that a guy like Messi needed a, a boost of confidence. And so um, I, I think really that there was just, was a boost for the entire, for the entire club, not just Messi, but you know, for that entire Argentina team to, to look at it and say, Hey, look, we can control this game. We can control the pace of play. We can, you know, put in our system. We can do what we want to. Um, and you know, they, you know, they're, they're accurate. They had a high, their conversion rate was really good. Um, you know, they played the ball into dangerous areas. You could see better link up play today. Um, and it really paid off for Argentina. Uh, so it's again, an entertaining match. Um, you know, looking ahead for, for group C the table right now, Poland, obviously in first with four points, Argentina second with three Saudi Arabia third, uh, on goal differential with three points. And then, uh, Mexico sitting fourth, 
Um, I mean, this group, no one's eliminated yet, but looking at their final matches, you know, you've got uh, Mexico and Saudi Arabia and then uh, Poland and Argentina. So um, Mexico needs a win and help. Uh, Saudi Arabia would need a a draw, a draw or a win, and then a, an Argentina draw or loss to get in. Um, because the yeah, yeah, I think that's what it would be. A, yeah, an Argentina draw or loss. Um, or no, I think no, an Argentina loss. Uh, as well as a Saudi Arabia draw or win um, for Saudi Arabia to get in. Argentina gets in with a draw or a win, and then Poland is uh, uh, a, a win or a draw, and, and, and Poland is in. So um, those are your scenarios for Group C. Uh, you know, it's, again, this is going to be an interesting group to see what happens, see who comes out of this. Uh, looking at the way that everyone's playing, for me, I feel like that's going to be Poland and Argentina. Um but you know, with, with the way that Saudi Arabia played, has been playing. I mean, I, there's a chance that they could at least pick up a draw against Mexico, uh, which would really put the the pressure on Argentina. And for me, I think if Argentina misses out on this, if they this may be the last uh, hurrah for Messi, um, which is good, which is going to be weird to say um, because you know Messi has. Messi's been a part of the part of the World Cup for a long time. I mean, I'll be honest, you know, I'm older than Messi, but you know, he's been let's see, he's been in the World Cup every year since 2006. Yeah, 2006. So, which is which to me is insane. Um, you know, it's oh man, yeah, I'm older than Messi. And the man's about to retire. So, I mean, I, this is more than likely his final uh, his final World Cup. I don't see him continuing on uh, in 2026. So uh, I think it would be a, a massive letdown for Argentina if they don't make it to the knockout stage here. Um, so look for them to really push the issue uh, against Poland next week. That's going to be a really fun match to watch. Um, I think Argentina is actually the better of the two sides, but you know, if, if they play like they did today, I like their chances, but they play like they did, like they did against Saudi Arabia. Um, I like Poland to come out on that one. So, um, but yeah, that's next week. We'll see what happens. And, uh, you know, it's tomorrow. I mean, there's still a lot more to, left to play, you know, uh, tomorrow is match day eight. And so looking at the schedule for tomorrow, groups E and F are on tap. The 3 a.m. match, of course, is Japan and Costa Rica. Um, this is going to be, be an interesting one. Uh, you know, I, I look at this one, and to me, I feel like, you know, Japan, after the shock win over Germany, uh, Costa Rica just got absolutely demolished by Spain the other day. Um, with, with that one, that was really kind of surprising. I wasn't expecting a 7 0. I certainly didn't expect Costa Rica to beat Spain, but I thought they were a club that could potentially, you know, play kind of a spoiler role here in this group. But it's what looking more like it's going to be Japan uh, in the spoiler role. So um, Japan and Costa Rica, I like the way Japan plays. Costa Rica is a, is a tough out. Um, so there's a chance that Costa Rica could, could at least pick up a point here, but you know, I'm leaning towards Japan. Uh, I think that's going to be a fun one to watch and see what happens. So if you are up at 3 a.m., tune into that. Otherwise, catch it later on replay. The next match up, the 6 a.m. match is apologies, Belgium and Morocco from Group F. Um, Belgium is a, is a, is a club that. You know they they've all they've been competitive the past couple of World Cups uh, 2014 one that springs to mind uh, they obviously won their first match um, over Canada and so yeah some people believe they benefited from some calls that, that weren't made against them um, 
So, you know, keep an eye on this. I don't think Morocco is is a, is a real threat to Belgium, but uh, you never know. You never know what happens, uh, what could happen. But uh, I, Belgium's the favorite here, hands down. Uh, so, yeah, that is, again, 6 a.m., Belgium and Morocco. The 9 a.m. match is Croatia, Croatia and Canada. Um, this one here is probably the sad, number two match on my matches to watch tomorrow. Uh, Croatia is a side that you know, they have a ton of talent. They really do. Um, I mean, Canada does as well. So, I mean, this one could really go either way. Um, Croatia... Drew with Morocco today, which I think was a bit of a downplay for Croatia. Um, but you look at the talent on both sides. You know, I think, I mean, this is a tough one to call. Uh, you know, ultimately, I think it's going to come. It's really going to come down to the wire uh, in terms of you know who walks, who potentially walks away with three points from that match. Um, I would lean towards Canada just because you know I've seen Canada a number of times in in Concacaf. Uh, so we were more familiar with them, but Croatia is extremely talented. Um, I, I, if I had to guess, and I have a look at, I want to say Croatia is a favorite here, uh, but keep an eye on Canada. Canada could potentially walk away. No one in this group is eliminated yet. Uh, a loss for Canada and they are, uh, they will be eliminated, um, from world cup contention. Uh, so that is all going to be on their minds uh, tomorrow. And then the final match, the 12 o'clock match tomorrow, is Spain and Germany. This is going to be a huge match. Spain and Germany are two of the uh, top clubs in the world. Um, I hit something on my keys, but I don't know what I did. Um Anyway, Spain and Germany are two of the highest-ranked clubs in the world. Spain, of course, uh, sitting at 7, Germany sitting at 11. So a massive matchup of world soccer powerhouses. Um, this one here is basically going to deter- – could be one of the, the deciding matches in this uh, in this group. Uh, obviously, if Spain wins, they will be through. Uh, if Germany loses, they, are, they would be on the verge of uh, – on the verge of a uh, falling out of the tournament, uh, which I think would be a, a, a big shock because, you know, Spain and Germany are obviously the favorites here, but after Germany's lost to Japan the other day, um, I do apologize. If Germany loses, they would essentially be, yeah, they would be eliminate, eliminated. So Germany and Costa Rica facing elimination tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's uh, winner go home. Well, not say winner go home, but uh, Germany is draw or win to stay in contention. Um, a loss, they're eliminated. Costa Rica is eliminated with a loss. Uh, I mean, this is going to be a massive, massive one. So uh, noon, mountain time, tune in. Uh, I believe that one is on Fox. Let me double check that. FS1. Yeah, that'll be on FS1, Peacock. And honestly, I'm going to be probably tuning into most of these on Peacock. Um instead of Fox, because I'm getting really tired of the commentary on Fox. Um, but 3, 6, 9, and 12, keep those time slots available. Check out Spain and Germany, match of the day tomorrow. Uh, Going to be extremely interesting to watch and see what happens there. Spain obviously dominated Costa Rica the other day. Germany with shock loss to, to Japan. Um, going to be really, really interesting to see what comes of that one. So, um Appreciate you guys tuning in, Earl, in the chat. Appreciate you popping in uh, from whatever you're doing. Uh, we do appreciate you guys every single time you hop on or listen to the podcast and the feed. So uh, until next time, somos amigos.